Onboard maintenance of coating systems is important in maintaining the cosmetic appearance of your vessel, minimizing the onset of corrosion, and ensuring that your vessel stays in good condition, which reduces the costs and time of scheduled dry dockings. This guide contains information on planning and carrying out OBM work efficiently and safely. In the battle against corrosion, a planned maintenance schedule for the readily accessible coating schemes is critical. For the high performance and low cost maintenance needed in today's competitive environment, International provides coatings that minimise surface preparation and application costs and make most use of crew time between dry dockings and time in port. Effective onboard maintenance requires that a series of basic steps are followed in order to maximise coating performance in service. The aim of this video is to outline the coating process, from surface preparation through application to examination of the applied film. Following all of the steps described will help ensure maximum benefit is gained from time spent maintaining coating systems on board by showing you how to get it right step by step. Onboard maintenance begins with planning the program. This involves checking the types of coating required to protect the major areas of the vessel, such as decks, cargo holes, superstructure, engine room and water ballast tanks. From the onboard maintenance chart, check which products are required for the vessel area you're planning to tackle. Copies of the OBM chart should be kept in the paint locker with the vessel's chief officer and ashore in the superintendent's office to ensure the correct system is used for each individual job. A simple coating logbook in the paint locker would also help to avoid the repeated painting of the same area unnecessarily by separate crews. Collect sufficient paint from the stores to cover the area to be coated. Some paints will be single pack, others twin pack, where two components, base and curing agent or converter, must be thoroughly mixed before use. Always check you have the correct combination of base and curing agent for any twin pack product being used. For paint application, you'll need brushes, rollers or spray equipment and sufficient equipment cleaner to clean the tools after use and maintain them in good condition for future jobs. At the start of any painting job, you must consult, read and follow the appropriate can labels, technical data sheets and material safety data sheets. This information provides essential details on the product's characteristics, such as drying time and overcoating times, the required level of personal protection equipment in order to use the product safely, and general health and safety information. If you cannot read the container labels or do not have access to the technical and material safety data sheets, or you do not understand the information contained within the labels and data sheets, do not use the paint concerned. Take all necessary protection measures. Always wear the correct protective equipment. Overalls, mask, goggles, safety boots, gloves and hard hat are an absolute minimum. You should be aware that the weather and in particular temperature and humidity have a major effect on paint characteristics. It's extremely important to avoid moisture on the surface to be coated. Clearly, you must not paint over drops of rain or salt water spray. If painted over, surface moisture may well cause large areas of the paint to flake off or completely detach at a later stage. The technical data sheet has the information you will need on, for example, touch dry, hard dry and over coating times. In the case of two pack paints, the working life or pot life as it's commonly known must be carefully noted. Once the two components have been mixed, it's vital that the paint is used within the pot life period. If exceeded, the paint cannot be used. Finally, check which equipment cleaner is required. The details are included on the technical data sheet. The single most important function which can influence paint performance is the quality of the surface preparation. 
the importance of removing oil, grease, old coatings, rust and other surface contaminants cannot be overstressed. Using a scraper or chipping hammer, remove any loose paint, scale or corrosion until you find a firm edge. When using a scraper, work with light strokes at around 45 degrees to the steel surface for maximum effect. Remove all grease, oil, dirt and contamination from the surface. Pay particular attention to areas near machinery where oil, grease or hydraulic fluid spills may have occurred. First, mix the correct amount of approved cleaning agent with fresh water. Choose a biodegradable agent, one which is friendly to the environment. Work the solution into the contaminant and then completely remove it from the surface by fresh water washing. Make sure that you do not spread the contamination around the surface being cleaned. If all traces of oil, grease or other contaminants are not removed, the freshly applied paint will not stick to the surface and detachment problems may occur later. Wash down the whole of the area to be painted using fresh water. All traces of salt contamination must be thoroughly removed. If not, premature detachment of the paint film is likely to occur. 95% of all paint detachment problems are caused by the presence of salt, moisture or oil contamination. So make certain you keep washing with sufficient fresh water until all traces of salt, dirt and oil are removed from the surface to be coated. The purpose of surface preparation is to remove as much existing corrosion as possible and prepare the remaining coating to produce a surface onto which the paint can firmly stick. The disc sander or power wire brush are ideal for the treatment of corroded areas and create a suitable surface for painting by feathering the edges of the surrounding intact coatings. During surface preparation, care must be taken not to polish the steel surface, which may lead to poor addition of the applied paint system. The old paint may be several layers deep. By abrading the edges of spot repairs to a distance of about 50 millimetres, an overlap area is created, allowing the freshly applied paint to stick evenly to the prepared spots and the surrounding overlap areas. Paying insufficient attention to feathering will prove costly in the long term, as these areas are likely to be points of poor addition and subsequent coating breakdown. Generally use light strokes to prevent the power tool biting into the steel surface, causing it to be too rough. For difficult corners, uneven surfaces and angled areas, a needle gun may be used. Hold it firmly but do not allow the gun to dig into the metal surface, otherwise tiny points of steel will form and subsequently stick up through the coating, causing fresh corrosion to occur. Be thorough in the removal of all dust and debris from the properly prepared surface. Some dirt particles may be so small you can't easily see them. Left on the surface they may lead to paint detachment, so brush the same surface several times or use a vacuum cleaner for removal. Make sure the waste is disposed of safely and correctly and cannot be blown back onto the wet paint at a later stage. Be responsible, protect the environment. Before you begin paint application, check again that you have sufficient quantities of the correct products to complete the planned job. Carefully note which paint materials are required for the job in hand. If the incorrect paint is used or the sequence of primer and finish are not applied in the recommended way, detachment, wrinkling, cracking or splitting of the applied film may result, which in due course may lead to detachment, further corrosion and more repair work. Before opening the cans, carefully read and follow the labels detailing health and safety information. Then clean the lids to prevent any dust or debris falling into the paint when the cans are opened. If the paint has been stored for a period of time, the lighter components will tend to float to the top, while the heavier components 
will stay at the bottom of the can. Because of this settlement, it's important to stir the paint thoroughly before use to ensure all components are fully mixed. The paint must be stirred using a power agitator. To avoid waste when using two pack products, only mix the quantity of paint required for the immediate job in hand. Stir the base component first. Add the correct quantity of curing agent to the base, taking care to drain all of the material into the base can. Thoroughly mix base and curing agent or converter together until a uniform solution is achieved. Now choose the application tools for the job to be undertaken. The paintbrush is best suited for small areas or places which cannot easily be reached or covered by spray application. Make sure the correct thickness of paint has been achieved. Remember the purpose of the coating is to add a layer of protection over the steel of the ship both inside and out. Generally films of 40 to 60 microns will be achieved by brush or roller application. So several coats may be required to achieve the correct film thickness. If the paint is applied too thinly, corrosion will occur after a short period of time. If the paint is applied too thickly due to over application, slow drying and film defects such as runs or sags will be the likely result. This will also promote the inefficient use of ship paint stores through overconsumption. On completion of the job, always thoroughly clean application equipment so that it's ready for immediate use next time you need it. Log the quantities of paint used and note the stock levels of remaining paint stores. By maintaining a well-organised and tidy paint locker, this job is easily done. A simple coating logbook in the paint locker detailing date of application, vessel area coated and the paint used will help avoid repeated painting of the same area when crew changes occur. If the procedures for onboard maintenance outlined in this video are carefully followed, the end results should be a well-protected, good-looking ship, the appearance of which will give a clear indication to charterers, classification societies and port state control authorities of the quality systems being maintained on board. In addition, you'll have the satisfaction that the job has been well done and that you got it right.